Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to GEICO. GEICO could help you get great coverage at a great price. And it only takes 15 minutes to see if you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today and see how much you could save. Glad you're with us on a Friday morning. Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. And once the Australian Open coverage on ESPN2 will bounce over there on the television side, we are presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests will join us via the Shell Penzoa performance line. Trey Wingo and Mike Golik here with you. We got Darren Woodson coming mm-hmm. up in a little bit. Our ESPN NFL analyst played in four conference championship games during his career with the Cowboys. Went three and one in those contests. We'll talk about his mindset for playing in those games, as well as what he thinks as a defender about the issue with Tom Brady's hand. Right. right? And we're going to do picks uh, still to come. Do you know who you're picking yet? Are you still kind of hedging? I'm still sort of going through, to your point, Mike, yeah. I'm still sort of going through the uh, the process <laughs> of getting to that decision. Kind of hedging hedging a little bit. A little bit. Both, well, yeah. A little yeah. bit. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Darlington will join us as uh-huh. well, uh, our ESPN NFL reporter. And Teddy Atlas will be with us. Uh, at about 9.30, talking about the fights coming up this week. And in about an hour, uh, the Bill Belichick has his presser, right? So he, he has a press conference. So if there's any interesting news, and normally they may not be, because Bill yeah. Belichick it doesn't say a whole lot, but we are dealing with the hand injury to Tom Brady. So I imagine we're going to get some news out of there, something said by Bill Belichick. So oh, he'll say something. Yeah, he'll say something. Hopefully he'll say it uh, and get get that all squared away before the end of our show so we can uh, discuss. Exactly. Again, the issue with Tom Brady, if you weren't with us earlier today, he had a glove on his right hand, which he never does. Uh, he doesn't like having a glove on his right slash throwing or passing hand. He injured it in practice earlier this week. He has canceled two straight days of media appearances, which he normally doesn't do. They say he'll speak today. We'll find we'll out. Um, but he also didn't take a single snap in practice on Thursday, which is the most important practice of the week. It's the padded practice. Yeah. And uh, Dante uh, Stallworth, who was a former Patriot, tweeted out, that's when they do the most important things in New England. Third downs. Third downs, yeah. All that kind yeah. of stuff. They do that. Brian Hoyer took every single snap uh, in practice with the first team. And for those delving even further, when you look at a close-up uh, picture of the right hand with the glove on it, it looks like kind of squared off on the thumb like – Maybe there's a, a splint underneath it because that's what we don't know. And I don't know if we will know from, from Bill Belichick or Tom if they do both speak today. Is it a hand? If so, where on the hand? Is, is it a thumb? thumb? You know, I, I doubt they're going to get that specific, uh, about that, but that's He's the, got a lower body the, contusion. The, yeah, exactly. That, that's going to be the big issue. If it's a thumb, now you're really talking about, you know, that, that to be able to squeeze the ball, to be able to throw the ball well. So. And what effect it could have come Sunday. Well, again, why else would you put a glove on but for to have a better, have a better grip? Teddy yeah. Bruschi talked about that uh, on NFL Live with us yesterday. Kurt Warner, after he broke his thumb, wore a glove the rest of his career because uh, you know he, he, the grip on the football was different. Well, I think he wore a glove yesterday. He knew he wasn't practicing. Yeah. He may have wore a glove so nobody would see, see what was on his hand more than because he didn't. It wasn't it wasn't providing any function yeah. during practice. How great would it be, by the way, if he showed up at his press conference with two oven mitts? Yeah, just two giant of you know, like the guys that hold the the thing on the sidelines. I think it'd be awesome. <laughs> I, think I think. Oh what? yeah, yeah, the, the time the, the, guy. Yeah, the, yeah, the big gloves, the I, big orange gloves. That would be a great sense of humor thing that Absolutely. you don't see the uh, New England Patriots having the sense of humor Tom, thing a whole lot. Why are you wearing the gloves? You know. I've always liked this color. Yeah. I think it goes well with my complexion. I think that's a cool job that guy has. And I've I always wanted to, to be yeah, that guy yeah. holding the mic, so that that's why I'm wearing this. Really cool. It would be tremendous. It would. And you know what? It would be the whole room would yeah. die laughing. That would be good. And they'd probably get around the issue because he said, "No, I just like these. Yeah, I'm fine. Everything's good. I just I really enjoy how they fit on my arms. They're very comfortable. Yeah, I think they'd be hilarious. Yeah, it would I? I agree with that. I think they won't cool. do it. No, they won't. But they should. Uh, let's get started with what's trending. And I guess this is good news for the Cavs. Uh, they won. Yeah, yeah. But they played the team with the worst record in the NBA, Mike, and they blew a 20 point lead at halftime at home and had to hang on and beat Orlando by one. Yeah, Isaiah Thomas hits a couple of late free throws in this one. And second half since Christmas, they're the worst in the league in about every meaningful statistical category there is out there. So, and as Isaiah Thomas said after the game, they have to quit playing one-on-one basketball, especially in the second half. They had a 20-point lead, so you had a lot of isolation play. And we've seen that out of the Cavs at times anyway. And as he said, and it's, it's not like it's rocket science. You do, they do better when you move the ball uh, a little bit more. And that's something they need to do at a better rate and a better pace. So can they get to that point by the, and that's what the talk is all the time. Can they get there by the time the playoffs start? 
Uh, how much better can IT be in this offensive flow with the more games he's going to play? I still think they're going to be right where they want to be, which is in the finals when all is said and done. Well, yeah, we talked about this a little bit in, in over under. Yeah. I, I guess that's still probably going to happen, but I certainly don't feel as I think they're still the favorite, but maybe it, a lot as I did earlier. Right. Exactly. You know, in years past, they would have treated this game like a loss. Uh, but I think they were so happy to actually get a win. Yeah, sometimes, you know, sometimes you just need a win to sort of get things going. And if you're a Cleveland fan or a LeBron fan, maybe thinking, "Hey, look, they got it going in the right direction. Now let's see if they can take it to the next step." But it was a one point win over the team with the worst record uh, in the NBA. By the way, our BPI, our Basketball Power Index, right yep. now only gives the Cavs a four and a half percent chance to make the finals. Wow, four and a half. That's something. The yeah. BPI basketball part. So the basketball nerds here. Yeah, the oh, basketball nerds okay. are are not in. On they're the, not on in. The not in right on now. the Cavs. No, we'll see if they're right as right. it plays out. Uh, we continue. Yeah, we do. There you go. With what's trending? This is going to be something to watch mm-hmm. going forward as we're getting closer and closer to spring training starting next month. Pitchers and catchers reporting. The Players Association said no to the league's proposal to institute a twenty second pitch clock and limit mound visits in an effort to speed up play, Mike, in, in a season in 2017 where baseball games were three hours, five minutes, and 11 seconds long on average. You know, the the great thing about baseball, when they want to try things, they have they have the minor leagues to do it. And, and, and they've done the 20-second pitch clock in the minors to kind of get a sense of how it's going to work. For the NFL, that stuff can be done in preseason if you want to get a look at things. You get way more sample size by doing it in the minors. And I know Rob Manfred, he wants to work with the union. We want to have that good working relationship to work to something here. The union has rejected uh, these changes, and Rob Manfred, basically, it seems, is going to be, well, we're going to do it anyway. Right. We tried to work with you. We wanted to kind of get this done together, but if you're not in on this, we're going to do it anyway because we think baseball needs this. Well, here's the money quote uh, from Jerry Krasnick's article on ESPN.com with Manfred. My preferred path is a negotiated agreement with the players. But then he added, but if we can't get an agreement... We're going to have rule changes in 2018 one way or the other. You can work with us or yeah. you can stand by and watch us implement the rules. That's kind of kind of the way it's going to be. They said they're not going to really discuss more of it until uh, the next owner's meeting, which begin January 30th. 30th. Yeah. Which, by the way, I-, I would be fascinated to find out how the dynamics play out here. If there right. isn't an agreement, what can the players' union, which, by the way, the baseball players' union has always been yes, the sir. strongest mm-hmm. union of any players out there, whether it's you know getting through free agency before anybody else, dealing with strikes, all that kind of stuff. But my goodness, uh, they have been very strong and they able have. to get their things on behalf of the players. So I would, you know, we talked about this that week after that January thirtieth meeting. We'll have somebody on from baseball and we'll uh, we'll uh, get uh, get some information on how that plays out. Uh, maybe getting uh, Vikings fan Buster Olney on with us, right? Well, we'll see. If the Vikings win, he'll yeah. come on and be happy. If they lose, he may not want to come on. Well, we'll have him talk baseball. Then. There you go. Well, okay. Either way, we'll get Buster Olney. Right. And we'll finish up with what can only be described as just an absolutely great job by an expansion team. Uh, in the meeting of the top two teams in the NHL, the Vegas Golden Knights beat the Lightning 4-1. to one. And, Mike, they got to 30 wins faster than any expansion team in NHL history. Yeah, very incredible. They did it in, uh, what, the 44 games. 44 games. And before that, it was the Florida Panthers in 93 and the Flyers in 67. It took them 69 games uh, to get to those wins. They've been playing incredibly well against good talent, too. They're 12-3 and against teams who have made it to the Cup Finals the previous five seasons. They're 19-1 and when scoring first this season. And... So they have 30 wins. Most wins for a first-year NHL expansion team is those Florida Panthers in 93 and the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim in 93. That year as well. Right. Both those Crazy. teams had 33 wins. The Golden Knights already have 30. So it's they're going to blow that one away. Absolutely. So very impressive. And to, to me, I'm so happy pro sports are in Vegas and we're past that whole gambling stigma thing of Las Vegas. We weren't sure how that would work there because of 41 home games as opposed to when the Raiders go there. It's eight home games. And would it be more their fans or transient, you know, fans of the other teams coming in? Uh, but it's working out well for them, and they're playing well, so that's very cool to see. Uh, the home ice advantage is real, and it's spectacular mm-hmm. uh, for the go. Golden Knights. They have done an amazing job, and they have flipped the switch to winning pretty quickly. So Make the Switch is brought to you by Pennzoil Synthetics, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. And we now are going to make the switch to talking about football, Conference Championship Sunday with our... 
This is Five Point Stance on Golick and Wingo. All right, here we go. Five Point Stance. The Jags beat the Steelers in Pittsburgh and advanced to face the Patriots in Foxborough, just like the 2007 postseason when they lost to the Patriots. They're the 10th team to face the Steelers and Patriots in the same postseason. Only the 76 Raiders and the 2015 Broncos beat both, and they both been on to win the Super Bowl. But there's a difference there, Mike. Unlike the Jaguars, those two teams won both games at home. Right. These these on the road. And I tell you, one of the to me, one of the best stats out there for Jacksonville when you're going against a a Tom Brady who was obviously one of the greats of all time, but also a stationary quarterback. Yep. Who, as I said earlier, will hit the deck and live to fight another play. Jacksonville pressured opposing quarterbacks thirty three percent of the time this season. That's second best in the NFL. Despite blitzing just 17% of the time, that's the lowest in the NFL. So that is four-man rush. Right. They get pressure. They get sacks. You got seven back to cover how you want to cover. That is a – you want to talk about a feather in the cap. That's why 55 sacks, 21 interceptions, when you can pressure with just those front four. Listen, and they have the guys that can cover so you can yep. pressure with those. The athletic linebackers well. in this one. We talk about the, the Ramsey and Boye, the, the, the corners, and Church at safety and what he's been doing. But Puzzle, first off, give it up for Puzzlesny. Right. Paul Puzzlesny and yeah, what? Yeah, guy that they brought over uh, a few uh, years ago. Oh, uh, uh, I mean, but he's, he's been in the league forever. Yep. And, you know, he's that run stopping guy who'll go out on the pass plays because they have such athletic linebackers and a Miles Jack and a Telvin, uh, Smith. Telvin Smith as well. Really, really impressive um, athletic ability by those linebackers. By the way, Telvin Smith yesterday talked about the point where he got the unsportsmanlike conduct, got a fine for $10,000. Yeah. He's like, I'm sorry, I take it back. Please don't find me. And we're like, bro, no, you should have said I was pointing to somebody in the stands. Yeah, there you go. I wasn't pointing at the opposing Pittsburgh player. <laughs> you just lost your appeal right now by uh-huh. saying that. Look, file it. Say, no, deny. Say it was somebody else. Saw a friend. Maybe you have a chance of knocking it down from mm-hmm. ten to five or right. 7500 he laid it all out there. He's not getting any of that ten grand. No, back. he's not. We continue in our five point stance. Look, the Jags led the NFL in rushing this season, 141 yards per game. They've been relying even more heavily on their run game in the postseason, averaging 160 rushing yards in their two wins. The three teams to beat Brady, Belichick, New England in the playoffs all rushed for at least 120 yards and a TD. Those three teams averaged. Just about 160, 158 yards rushing in those wins. You know, and, and it's, uh, so we always talk about obviously the running back in this and Leonard Fournette. You got to give it up for that old line. You know, what they do. Remember they have a rookie at left tackle on Cam Robinson. Right. The kid from Alabama. They have the highest paid center. Not a lot of that is a timing issue, but he's a good center in Brandon, uh, Linder. But the, it's an old line where I, I don't imagine a lot of people can name uh, who the starters are, but you got to give it up to them. And what there's a couple of teams in this class, like Minnesota, it changed the entire basically starting five, and and how it's changed for them in rushing the ball this year. So while Fournette's going to get a lot of the love, and certainly Bortles as well, who's been running well, give it up to the five guys up front and the tight ends who come in and block. They're yeah. doing a nice job. Yeah, and Bortles has been a big part of that. Yeah, yes, as, you know, yes, he, I mean, has. It, he didn't do as much in the Steelers win as he did in the Buffalo win where he actually had more rushing yards right. than passing yards. But see, that's why I think that's the one thing that won't happen Sunday. I know Bill Belichick is looking at that tape and seeing how they extended drives. He said, guys, let's put a spy on the end here. If you can't get there, let's just, it's kind of like a mush rush. Yeah. You know, let's make sure. And by the way, how odd is it we're talking about Blake Bortles defending him as a running quarterback yeah. now? I mean, he's a little more athletic than I think people give him credit yes, for. Yes, he is. He is. But, but the Bill will make sure that what you consider to be your success that's the thing they're going to try and take away more than anything else. All right, how about Tom Brady looking to become the first quarterback to win multiple playoff games after turning 40? Brett Favre is the only other quarterback to even start or win a playoff game after turning 40. He went 1-1 one and one in that year with Minnesota when they went to the NFC Championship game and they lost... Uh, they won the divisional round, and they lost in the NFC Championship game when he threw that interception late across the middle to New Orleans. That game eventually went to overtime, and the Saints won it in overtime and went on to beat the Colts in the Super Bowl that year. But Brady really hasn't slowed down. He's averaging 47.6 pass attempts in the playoffs since 2014, compared to 36.5 in the postseason from 2001 to 2013. See, here's the thing. With them, you never know how it's going to come out, right? Yep. They could come out and run the ball 15 straight times. Yep. You know, or, or throw the ball 15 or 20 straight times. You just don't know. And that's one of the things that's great about them is how they're going to attack you. What, what more do you need to say uh, about Brady? That's why, 
it's such a, a big thing we're talking about now is, okay, you're 40, you've had the Achilles issue, you've been on the injury report for your Achilles, is there any effect there? And now this hand injury to where you didn't even practice on one of the big practice days out there. So that's all you can do on Brady is you expect a great performance and if not, we look for reasons why. Right. Is it because of injury? Is it because of age? Is it because of the defense now they're going to face this week? But uh, listen, he is he has created the list of reasons of why we talk so highly about him. He had fifty three pass attempts uh, in the win over the Titans. Fifty three, yeah, over three hundred yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. You know that's why what you just said. Everybody looks for something. Oh, maybe it's the hand. Maybe it's the Achilles that he's been sore. You know, a couple of times on the year. Let me just say, if he throws 53 times in this game yeah. and Jacksonville only has one or two sacks and not a lot of pressure, that's a problem. That, that's going to be a, a monster win uh, for New England there. I, I, I would find it hard to believe he would throw it 53, 54, 55 times and not be hitting the deck a few times. Ex- well, if he, you're right. If that happens, Jacksonville, it's been a good run, sure, mm-hmm. as Bill, Bill Pito used to say when <laughs> he was around these parts. <laughs> How about neither the Vikings nor the Eagles have ever won a Super Bowl, going a combined 0-6 in the game. No teams without a Super Bowl win have reached the conference championship round as frequently as the Vikings or the Eagles. How about that? Uh, most conference championship games since the merger with no Super Bowl wins. The Vikings nine times, Eagles seven times, Bills five times. So, you know, one of these teams is going to get there with a chance to win the Super Bowl this time around. I, I am... You know, everybody is talking about obviously Brady and his hand and Jacksonville, that defense. I am really, really looking forward to this matchup a lot. There are so many great individual matchups in this game. I think these are the at least set up to be two of the better games I think we're going to get in a while on conference champion, on conference championship. I think they're going to really be am. fun. I yeah. really do. I think they're going to be very compelling, very interesting, very close. You know, I, I, we, we, we thought that last week for the second day yeah. and we almost got, well, wait a minute, 17 zip in one game, 21, 21 zip in another game. And you're like, Oh my God, where did it go? And they both ended up being, you know, pretty, pretty interesting games. Absolutely. <laughs> And we'll finish up our five point stance. Case Keenum and Nick Foles were the starting quarterbacks for the 2015 Rams when they went seven and nine, who had traded Sam Bradford to the Eagles prior to the season. According to the Elias Sports Bureau, this will be just the fifth time in the last 30 years former teammate QBs meet in the playoffs. The home team, by the way, won the previous four, which would go the way of Nick Foles and the Eagles. Aha. Uh-huh. The other times you go back to 07 division around Matt Hasselbeck, Brett Farr, Seattle Green Bay, they were teammates, and that was also the time before in 03. Wild card game, Hasselbeck, Brett Favre. Then you go to 96 wild card, Jim Harbaugh for the Colts, Mike Tomzak for Pittsburgh, and 95 divisional game, Rodney Pete for Philly, and Troy Aikman for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, the Jeff Fisher factor looms large yeah. here in this game. You don't really know. And huh? Bradford is part of that too, because he was drafted, uh, by Jeff Fisher and the Rams first overall in 2010. And, He's still in the mix and looks like he's going to be active. And you're only human. Do you think in a private moment, certainly you never talk about it publicly, maybe at home, that Case Keenum and, and, and his family are thinking, man, I'm going to get a lot of money. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna, I mean, he'll never say it publicly. He's talking about team, team, right. team now. But, you know, when you're at home just thinking what this leads to, you're one pretty well. You're going to get paid. Look, I, I think that they're going to put the franchise tag on him. Then and he's going to get and paid. Then, and then try and work out a contract. Because yeah. that franchise tag is always a placeholder and for Case Keenum, that's a really good place to be in. I mean, Kirk Cousins got a 3,000% raise when they put the franchise tag yep. on him. And Case might be coming close to that. I don't even know. What, what, well. what does Case make? Brett, can you find out what Case makes? I mean, I know it ain't a lot. Yeah. You know? I know Brett, it's not get a lot. on that. What, what's, yeah. what's, the, what's the salary for Case Keenum? Because uh, whatever it is, it's going to go up it's by a significant <laughs> amount. <laughs> so much. Um, all right. We got a couple of grill goals here. You want to you get some of these in? Sure. Go ahead. Right, let's get, you want to get one or two of them? No, do, do one now. We'll, we'll do, we'll we do, got one, we'll do a couple more. later. Yeah. Okay. If we're doing one, I think in a grill goal situation, this has to be the one. My question for Mike is when you make your burger brat on the grill, what type of cheese do you put on top and how many slices? Thanks. Well, see, I think the how many slices is just as important as what kind. Well, what I like to do, I, I like a couple pieces of, of cheese, but I don't like I don't like put them both on the burger. I like them one on each side, and obviously you can't do that on a grill. You're gonna get melted cheese all over the grill. So I love the smell of melted cheese. Oh, I, I love it as well. So what I'll do is is I'll put the one slice of cheese on top of the burger, and and when it's done, 
I will put another piece of cheese on the bread and set the hot burger right off the grill right on that piece of cheese so then I have a piece of cheese on both sides. And then I finish off with my lettuce, my, you know, mustard, whatever condiments I'm going to use. So I'll go two pieces of cheese, but not stacked. I'll put that second piece on the piece of bread and put the hot burger on it so it melts uh, along with the top one that is already melted. Okay. How about that? That's That's oddly specific? That that is very oddly specific. And keep your (laughs) oddly specific questions uh, for us. Uh, at Grill Golic or also at Golic and Wingle, your oddly specific predictions for uh, Championship Sunday with the AFC and NFC title games. By the way, quick, uh, Brett, our researcher, got mm-hmm. it done. Case Keenum's year, one year, $2 million. $2 million this year. Franchise tag would be one year, about $25 million. About $24, $25 million. So it's, uh, and if you get to deal, you're probably going to be in the 18 to $20 18 million. 18 to $20 million, million dollars in multi-year. Wow. $2 million is nice. Yeah. Really, really, really nice. $18 million is better. Is is about nine times better. It's a yeah. And it's about to get a lot better for Case Keenum. Hello, I'd like to deposit this to checking. Fate is a fickle master. What? The future is uncertain. Okay, and what's my account balance? Ah, the horizon is cloudy. I see a long, treacherous voyage um, filled with great peril. Look, can I just get a deposit slip or something? A fortune bank teller. Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. I see a yellow-eyed serpent what? and a low APR. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Little lip sync, by the way. Funky Town with you on Golic and Wingo on ESPN Radio and now on ESPN2 as our coverage of the Australian Open has ended. So if you're joining us on ESPN2, we're sorry for how terrible we look, but we appreciate you being with <laughs> there us. There you go. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us via the Shell Penzoil Performance <laughs> Line. And by the way, we got some more Grill Golic questions coming up. We got a couple up there, but... You want to get in with some more of that? Call 860-506-5505 and leave your hashtag Grill Goal at question. We'll get to those a little bit later, but we're getting to my guy, Darren Woodson, joins us now in studio, giving us a straight talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, best phones, best networks, no contracts. You know, a lot of people thought that we're back on ESPN2 because of the, the Australian Open is over. It, Woody has it in his contract that if he appears on this <laughs> show, so true. we have to be on ESPN2, so face we, have, in here, we have man. switched over. Face yeah. time in this junk. Uh, what? you got to give the people what That's they exactly want, right. as Jalen Rose says. <laughs> exactly a lot right. of people demanding some Darren uh-huh. Woodson face time. Hey, before we get into everything that's going on a conference championship Sunday, i got to say, Say, you got to love what your guy Herm Edwards is doing to your alma mater, Arizona yeah. State. Uh, this is the email, that, or not the Twitter post that Herm put out there at 6 a.m. on the East Coast, which means it was at 4 a.m. right yeah. out in Arizona. ASU players forks up social media. Be aware of its potential impact on you and the program. It never forgets, it becomes your resume. Your social media strategy should be consistent with your values and make sure you draw a line between your public online persona and your private life. I.e., uh, don't, don't press send. send. Yeah. <laughs> Herm is out there that. preaching it up. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, you know, he's the right guy. Oh, you got that He's right. the right guy for, I mean, listen, if, if my son was a football player coming up at that, at that age and, uh, and I knew that, you know, I could just give him to a, a coach and I knew he would be okay. Herm would be the guy because I know what, who Herm is through and through. He's going to forever be a servant and he'll, he'll tell you, you know, his, his entire walk is to serve others and to help others become better people in that. I mean, he's just going to be, a, he's going to do a tremendous job. One thing I know say. for sure when he's in a living room talking to, we'll see the recruits, the actual yeah. players, the 18 year olds that he gets. But when he leaves that house, the parents are going to be saying to that 18 year old, you're playing for that yeah. man. That's right. <laughs> you're you're, you're going to guy. play for that man, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. and then we'll see where that goes from there. Uh, yeah, look. I just you have to love what he's doing. Yep, it's just great. Do. And as a as yeah. a former Arizona State alum, I, I thought you'd get a kick out of that. But as a former Dallas Cowboy, mm-hmm. you've played in four of these games. Yeah. Conference championship. Your Cowboys teams always had the swagger. Mm-hmm. Uh whether it well, you might have played in five, I'm sorry. No, you played in four. 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 Yep. Uh, you could just ask him. I, yeah, why I don't know. But he knows yeah. better than I do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even remember the plays. He, This guy right here, Trey, oh, I know. remember the play, the exact play. Well, you got beat on this play just because you didn't turn your hips. <laughs> uh, I'm like, uh, what year was that? Uh, I actually reminded him once that he actually had a pick six against Norv Turner in his first year. With the, he goes, no, I didn't. And I looked up at the tips. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, it you was did. right here. Yeah, you did. Um, so what? what's the mindset What? What to, for you to be successful in a conference championship game? What what's the approach? Because you know the stage is enormous. You know that you're one win away from everybody's dream yeah. and having a chance at winning that ring. Your Cowboys teams are really good at it. How did you guys prepare for the moment and the stage? Being laser focused on each day and in your preparation. 
So the game is not won on Sunday. And I think that's, you know, the conception is, oh, you go out there on Sunday and, and you figure out a way to win. The game is won, and it's the reason why the Patriots are who they are as far as winning championships. You win the game on Wednesdays, Thursdays, Friday, and then lead up to the process. And I think that's the one thing we did. Now, we had characters with the Dallas Cowboys, the Michael Irvins, no. the Charles Haley's of the world, and all those guys. Nate Newton. The Nate Newtons. But the one thing we all – we're on the same page about was preparing for the game to win the game because we wanted, we felt like once we got in the tournament, we were going to be the best prepared, most prepared, most talented football team in the tournament. But that's, that's the way I approach it. And that's the way I think these teams are approaching it now is, you know, you, you're starting to see the, the teams that weren't laser focused, the Pittsburgh Steelers who fell by the wayside because they weren't Definitively focused, they not. weren't focused on the, the game at hand that was right in front of them. The Jacksonville Jaguars. Now we saw Jalen Ramsey early in the, you know early in the week make the statement like we're going to win this, but you know that was early. It was after an emotional win. The entire the rest of this week, Tom Coughlin and I'm sure Marone have talked to this team about being laser focused, and we haven't heard a peep out of Jacksonville. They are going in the same direction. I think that's what you want to do. You don't you you can't you got to eliminate everything that's outside. All you're doing is playing for the weekend. Uh, we had AJ Boyer on a little while ago, uh, their cornerback from Jacksonville, and, and I knew publicly he wasn't going to say anything mm-hmm. about it. But maybe even now, what's going on in that locker room when you read that this future Hall of Fame quarterback, a guy who beats everybody, all of a sudden isn't practicing with a hand injury? Well, I think you have to do your job because because the one thing you still you know this goalie. You still have to beat the guy in front of you. Right. You can't worry about what's going on with Brady's hand because you have to win your battle. You're the battle in the trenches. You have to cover your guy on the outside. You have to do your job. And then if you have those opportunities, if you are a Calais Campbell or Malik Jackson and Brady's just laying on the ground and his hand just happens to be exposed, uh-huh. you may want to step up. Well, well hey, hello, you know, right thumb. How are you may, today? You know, get trounced on. Mm-hmm. But that's just... That's a part of the game. That's the, you know, the gamesmanship that, that goes on. But I don't yep. think that you you get laser focused on, well, Brady's hands hurt. Do your job, and if the opportunity presents itself, test it out. Okay, we're all looking at the photos of Tom Brady's hand in the video like it's the Zabruder film. Okay, we are all like, <laughs> what do we see? What a, ha, do you see anything that when you look at it that no. indicates there may be a brace under that thumb or anything like that? No, I, I just don't. I mean, I, I we can only assume by, you know, by hearing what we heard about, he never wore a glove oh, on his, yeah. never. On his like hand. Him. So that we can only assume that there is a problem with it. Uh, and Teddy made the assumption yesterday that basically, hey, look, you know, he never wore a glove to throw the football. He likes to, you know, and he's probably wearing that glove to grip uh, the football. So there's probably a, a, some type of problem. Maybe it's a wound. Maybe it's an open wound that he's trying to cover up. I, I, I just We just don't know, and we won't know until they come out on Sunday. So so let's just go to the game and talk about that. And one of the most important things that this great Jacksonville defense can do, 21 interceptions, 55 sacks, how, if you were that defense with the personnel they have, how would you cover Gronk? Look, I think there's two ways. I think, Mike, uh, I think Miles Jack is a guy who's athletic at the linebacker position, uh, has, has tremendous coverability, and we saw that at, when he played at UCLA. He would be man up on certain guys. And, and even in the league, he's, he's had opportunities where he, he will play some man-to-man. He's going to need help. Whether it be with, uh, Barry Church or, or, or Gibson, if Gibson is out there to play, I'm not sure just yet, but he's going to have to have some safety help at the same time, but you have to be physical at the line of scrimmage with Gronk. Get him off his mark. Don't let him just run down the field, uh, you know, wide open without, without getting some type of, without obstructing his, uh, his route, but you have to get your hands on him. You got to get him off his spot and make it hard for to, to Brady just look at him and, and, and go right to him. Well, everybody says that, and then they try it, and yeah. then it doesn't happen. Because they give you so many different looks. They give you a look. You know, Just past week, they're playing the Tennessee Titans, and Brady comes to the line of scrimmage. He sees they have one-on-one man coverage. He looks at Gronk, who's right next, basically at the tight end position. He looks at Gronk and says, go out wide. Points him to, in the direction to go out <laughs> right. wide. He goes out wide. He has uh, Bayard by himself. And then they just, they throw a little stop route, boom. A little pitch and catch. And that's, that's the brilliance of Brady of understanding what the, what the coverage is. He breaks down the coverage. He knows, understands the weakness. He knows where the matchup is and he goes right to it. And that's why it's so hard to cover ground. Everybody thinks, well, it's really, it's, you know, why don't you double them all the time? Well, that's not in your scheme. It's not what you do. And you just can't get out of your scheme. Uh, for this one matchup because of one guy, it's just hard to make that adjustment for everybody. So let's look at the other side of the ball. And we all hear that New England does a great job of taking away what you want to do, and, and Jackson would like to run the ball. 
But everybody knows when you play Jacksonville, stop the run. Yeah. Because make Blake Bortles beat you, and he had a three game stretch, which was good. But for the most part, you know, not so good. Right. Oh, they they keep rushing for a ton of yards. What makes you believe, and do you think New England can stop this running I do. game? I do. I, I think New England's a team, and you know, listen, there's not a whole lot of star power on that football team. There's not a you know a guy, one guy that sticks out, and you say, "Wow, he's going to just dominate this game." They do it in a team effort, and, and Matt Patricia does a great job of understanding exactly what you're trying to do. The offensively, if you're trying to, if Leonard Fournette is the key guy, well, they're going to stack it and they're going to say, okay, Blake Bortles, you beat my guys out there. Row, you beat Row, you beat Butler out there in one on one. What will coverage. they do so different than every other team that's trying to do the exact same thing? Right. Different looks, different slants, <laughs> uh, moving guys into the box, bringing safeties down, hiding the disguise in the coverage. They're going to make it hard on on Jacksonville to just get up there, line up, and say, uh, you know, and run the football. I don't. I haven't seen. A team just come in and just totally dominate them up front. Right. I haven't seen a team just do that to shot. I mean, have you, if, if I, if I've missed that, has someone, is, oh, the I, Patriots, I, the Patriots, I haven't yeah. seen anyone just totally get up front and even with the talent that they have. And I'm telling you, they're not dominant up front. Right. Honestly, but no one's really dominated them up front. Not since Kansas City in the exactly. opening game. Yeah. Opening game. Not since right. Kansas exactly. City in the opening game. Now, the one thing Miami did was they really got their corners and they pressed those receivers, yep. so they weren't getting that free release. Like Brandon Cooks is fast, yep. but he's not quick off the line. I mean, they they were really good at making those guys work for their free release. Now, obviously, that game was without Gronk, so that changes right. everything. But they didn't have a third down conversion in that game. All right, before we get, let you out, we got we got to know who do you like. Were you going Jacksonville, New England? Where are you going? going? New England, man. I mean, until listen, you and I, I've talked to you a million times about this. Last year, I betted against New England. I I knew Atlanta was going to win the Super Bowl, and I, I felt like you were good at twenty eight to three, bro. Listen, I I I had no, I didn't think the Patriots were going to win it out. You know, went out last year. I'm not betting against them. Yeah. I'm not betting against against Alabama. No, exactly. How about how about Minnesota and uh, Philly? I got to go with my heart and go with the Minnesota Vikings and Mike Zimmer. Zimmer. I've been around Zimmer for 12 years as a as a uh, as an assistant coach to the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I know his heart. I know he's laser focused on this week, and I'm sure Philadelphia Eagles are as well. I just I like the matchup with with Adam Thielen on the outside. Stephon Diggs. They're going to run some double routes. Uh, You better cover them. Well, that has been the bugaboo on the Eagles secondary all year. That yeah. the, the, the second move, the yeah. double move double routes, moves, has yeah. been the ones they've bid on. All right, we'll get to some Golic, uh, grill Golic questions in a minute. But this just popped up, and I wanted to, to share it with everybody okay. here. It's from the Sports Business Daily. Uh, and people are talking about, you know, the ratings for football are down, and, you know, nobody's watching TV and all this kind of stuff. And the ratings are down. They are down. Mm-hmm. But among the most – here's why football and televised sports aren't going anywhere. Among the 100 most viewed shows on TV in 2017, 81 of them were sports telecast. Now, that's down from 88 in 2016, but that decline may be due to the Olympic year in 2016. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you have the Olympics, there's more sports. But let's take it one step further. Within the top 10 most viewed telecast, NFL game windows accounted for nine slots. The Oscars were number seven. So, in other words, NFL games were one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. Right. In terms of the top 10 telecast. Let's take it one step further. Uh, of the top 100 viewed shows in 2017, 64 of them were NFL games in 2017. So yes, viewership is down, much in the same way it's down across television the board. What this is telling you is that fewer people are not watching NFL games. A lot of it so it comes down to what's your defini- definition of is the NFL in a better or worse spot? Are they yeah. are they good or are they are not they making, as good? They're making more money. The, the the thing is going to be is the money. You're yeah. making fourteen billion dollars a year. Does that stay? If you're losing ratings, is that is that equal to losing money? We just saw the Verizon deal at what two and a half billion. I think they doubled their Verizon money. So, what? How do you judge whether the NFL is in a positive way or a negative way? Because we you could pick and choose. From a PR standpoint, they've certainly taken some hits. No doubt about it. Without Absolutely. And the ratings are down. That is a fact. Uh, but as we say, even if they're down a little bit, every other, every other sport would love to have their ratings. Everyone would love to have but their problems. They're still down. Yeah. So what's the key to you? What, what do you, when somebody asked you, Hey, is the NFL successful right now? What's your definition of that? You know, do you say, no, their ratings are down. So they're not. Is it, uh, well, I mean, they made 14 billion. Now they're going to make 14 and a half billion. So things are doing okay. And oh, by the way, that's one of the main things the owners care about. <laughs> I, I, I think these numbers say more about television than they do about the NFL. 
Yes. Television in general is down. Viewership is oh, down absolutely. across everything. All the choices, yeah. But of the things that people are watching on television, it's live sports. Yeah. And of those live sports, it is predominantly the NFL. Again, top 100 viewed shows in 2017, 81 were sports telecasts. Of those top 100, 64 of the 100 were NFL games. And of the top 10... NFL game windows were nine of the top ten, the Oscars being the only one that is not an NFL game in the top ten viewed programs in 2017. Yeah, you know, with football, live events, man, I mean, it's the real reality out there. You have all this reality TV, but sports live, that's about as as real as you can get. So, um, again, you, you can spin it any way you want, whether you think something is successful or not. But when people are turning on their television, they're turning it on to football. Yeah, look... At the end of the day, the thing that people watch TV for most, it seems, are live live right, events right. and live sporting events dominate all of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, uh, nine out of the top ten shows in that window were NFL games. We have time for one quick Golik here, uh, Grill Golik. You want to do that now or you want to save it for the next segment? All right, we'll save it for the next segment. We got we, we, we do want to grill you. I want to be clear about that. I, I will, would like to be grilled. We still have to do our picks. Yes, we got a lot we to get to. We got some picks. I'm, I may have some interesting well, picks We're still here. sort of calculating those. Yes, we are. And I think we're about 10 minutes away from the Bill Belichick presser. Yeah, 9.05. 9.05. He's supposed to step up to the microphone. We'll see how uh, illuminating So obviously we will, will report as, as soon as we possibly can what he has to say about yeah. Tom Brady's hand because Tom Brady is supposed to talk today as well. He was already supposed to talk twice this week and did not. Right. So now could we get both of them talking today, and can we get a little more clarity on the injury to Tom Brady's hand? Plus, our Diana Rossini is up there in Foxborough. She'll have that information, and she'll have it on SportsCenter. And uh, we'll, we'll follow her on Twitter if we can get at that and see how much uh, information she's willing to get. So we've got that. We've got Jeff Darlington mm-hmm. coming up, our NFL reporter. Teddy Atlas will right. join us to talk about the fights this weekend. And we'll also head to Jacksonville for the unlikely place that Doug Marone is getting critical inside information yeah. on what it will take on how to beat the Patriots. Okay. Plus, we'll grill the big man. That's mm-hmm. all ahead. Stay with us. Attention shoppers. Clean up on aisle 14. <laughs> Clean up on aisle 14. Someone dropped a jar of pickles. Pickles. Beatboxing at a big box store. Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. A red minivan has the lights on in the parking lot. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Geico. 